Hello, everyone. Welcome to our new Analyst Angle. And today I'm very pleased to welcome Sylvain Ben, who is the CEO of Odesava. Sylvain, welcome. Thank you very much, Christophe. So, Sylvain, tell us a little bit about what Odesava does as a, uh, do as a company. What, what do you guys do? What is, where is the name coming from to begin with? So Odaseva is an enterprise data security platform. Uh, we work across the world in eight countries. We support more than 100 million users, and we specialize in very large enterprise who are transitioning from on-prem system to the cloud and to help them secure their, their data. So the company was founded uh, 12 years ago. At the time, I was working as an architect in the Salesforce Paris office uh, with the CAC 40 companies. And four of my customers uh, identified some um, elements of security that they wanted to improve and there was no solution on the market. And that led to Odaseva being born. So the name of Odaseva comes from um, Oda Seva. Uh, so my mom is French, my dad is Cambodian, and Oda in French stands for Oda City, Odas, and then for Seva, Cambodian coming from Old Sanskrit, standing for customer, uh, customer service. So it was how to innovate in customer service and reinvent uh, how to bring better security for the large enterprise. Thank you so much. This is a very interesting company name. And I think as I look at the platform and I've been tracking you guys for a few years, uh, it's evolved greatly uh, to the point where as a company, even you have just, I believe, um, uh, gotten to round C. So congratulations on, on the funding. Uh, I'd like to spend uh, a few minutes with you, Sylvain, on understanding uh, who you are as an entrepreneur. Uh, obviously, uh, there's a history behind uh, the founding of the company. So tell us more about that. Tell us about your own itinerary and how did you end up uh, here in the US, uh, like me, from coming from France? So I'm a technical CEO. All of my career uh, was in technology. I come from a business background, uh, but all of my career was from Capgemini and uh, working on Siebel Oracle technology, and then joining Salesforce, uh, where I had to learn how to become an architect for the large enterprise. And after 10 years of experience, uh, then I started the, the company. Um, the first few years of the company, we were uh, bootstrapped. Uh, and the reason we were bootstrapped is the problem to solve was really big. And GTM go-to-market was not the first area of focus for the company. So the first thing we needed to solve was security. Uh, when you work with very large enterprise and you protect and secure their data, the first thing that you need to make sure that you're doing is by securing the data that you don't generate a security risk. So we decided at the creation of the company need to become a no-view provider. And being a no-view no provider means you process information for your customers, but your own employees, when they connect to the database, actually cannot see the data. So you process it, but you cannot view it. So you're a no-view provider, meaning that should your system be hacked, then no one can steal from it because even yourself uh, cannot see this information. Uh, so um, extracting, loading, transforming, secure, like securing or encrypting encrypting data without viewing it is actually easier said than done. So it took us five years to implement the solution to both be able to scale and do all of those operations uh, from a no-view product perspective. So after five years, the problem was being solved and then we were ready uh, for go-to-market. So that's why we raised the first round, the seed round uh, with Serena Capital in 2017. Uh, then Salesforce Venture reached out to us to raise uh, Series A uh, and we brought Salesforce Venture to the cap table uh, with Partech uh, leading the round for the Series A. And then when COVID hit, um, all of the business continuity use cases got prioritized by the different executive committee of our customers, which led uh, to the Series B uh, led by Atroads uh, and F Prime um, in the Fidelity Group. Uh, and then uh, with the Series C, uh, the last round that we raised for $54 million with Silver Lake uh, is going to help us expand across the world, the world, especially in the US, uh, and accelerate um, our innovation in the world of security. This is a very interesting itinerary. We think about, you know, essentially starting this uh, company, trying to solve a problem that you uncovered with a large uh, customer, and then now becoming this global organization about to uh, 
uh, continue to grow uh, internationally. I think that's a, a, an amazing success. Uh, certainly very proud to see a French company do that um, personally. So let's talk about some of the, the issues around uh, security, around data, uh, around SaaS data, more importantly. Obviously, your focus has been Salesforce. Uh, maybe there'll be more in the future. But let's uh, take a second and think a little bit about what it means to protect SaaS data. Uh, people think somehow that there are magical people in the cloud who do your backups when you are uh, using your CRM, uh, Salesforce or others. doesn't matter which one. Uh, let's talk about that. There's no magical people in the cloud, right? So uh, in 2015, Microsoft wrote a really good study on how the responsibility model in the cloud works, where it's a shared uh, model uh, for the responsibilities. So if you take an example of, let's take Gmail. Uh, we you know most of us are using um, a cloud email application. And uh, those applications are protected uh, by, uh, in that case, by Google. So if there is a fire or if there is an integrity problem or you know, corruption of data at the data center level, uh, Google will take care of it. They will repair and be responsible uh, for the data center quality, running operations smoothly, and so on. Now, if you have a very important email and you click delete and you empty the recycle bin, um, and then if you call Google, uh, they will tell you that that's your fault. You decided to corrupt the information. So basically in a shared model responsibility for security, um, it's really about who is responsible for what. If you corrupt your own data or if you're being attacked by ransomware and you didn't put the right layer of defense against it, it will be your responsibility that you let the data be corrupted. So if you want to have a copy of the data from two years ago, from six years ago, from six months ago, from two hours ago, that would be your strategy. Uh, so that's why um, like the backup vendor uh, that you can work with is going to complement the backup strategy that the primary SaaS application uh, will be running behind the scenes. So they will, especially in a multi-tenant context, they will protect the old multi-tenant data center, but it will be your responsibility to cover for what is um, you know, confidentiality or integrity or availability or your own compliance. If you decide to store uh, personal information that you're not authorized uh, to put in the system, well, you are responsible for this. That's unrelated to the SaaS vendor you've been working with initially. So that's why the role of Odaseva is to help customers complete uh, and execute uh, with them uh, the different responsibility that they have uh, from a security standpoint, from the confidentiality, making sure the data is not going to be stolen, integrity, making sure the data is not going to be corrupted, availability, making sure the system is not going to um, uh, be facing an outage, and then compliance, helping to execute compliance from privacy regulation or industry regulation or even security regulations. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit more about a couple of these topics. So the, the, the first thing is, um, well, the backup piece, the archiving piece, very clearly your responsibility uh, as an organization. I think it's still some disconnect out there in the in the market. So clearly, it's good that you're reiterating the um, uh, this this issue and 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 making it a core topic. The other uh, point is you mentioned earlier. If I may paraphrase, the best data is data you can never view, you can never see. Right? That's the most secure data. Uh, and I think that's uh, that brings up a couple of of conversations. I think I'd like to have around compliance. Um, a lot has been said about compliance. There are lots of regulations. They're very stringent and. Um, it will happen to you. You're going to get audited. You're going to get in trouble if you're not compliant. Security is definitely one aspect that seems to be pervasive across all regulations. It's just one aspect, though. So let's double click on that. From your perspective, what are you seeing uh, in terms of challenges for customers when they look at their uh, or the domain of data they have, especially in SaaS applications? How can they actually make sure uh, that their uh, information uh, is compliant, that it, the data that they're uh, leveraging, hosted to your point by others, is compliant. How do you build those uh, processes in and how do you help? Um, so when we look at uh, regulation overall, um, there were like a huge wave of regulation around the 90s. 
um, with the acceleration of internet at the time. Um, and if we look at privacy regulation, most of them are coming from 1995 uh, or year 2000 across the world. Uh, and the regulation kind of stabilized. They were very legal oriented. Uh, and what changed is 19, in uh, 2018 when GDPR got released. So it was a, a huge uh, revolution uh, in, the, in the regulation industry because suddenly the regulation was less on the legal side, but very strict on how you should operate the data at the architecture level on how to you should put in place the right to be forgotten, the right to access the data, the right to portability, and it had very specific technical impact. And then from GDPR, which was on the privacy regulation, it propagated, first of all, from Europe to the US, with CCPA in California being the first. But that was the beginning of a huge wave of, of regulation across the globe, where from privacy, it transformed into I would say more global uh, regulation uh, or security regulation. And the one that uh, shook the world was the one from China that redefined the concept of residency. Uh, residency in former regulation was defined as where you store the information. Um, but the Chinese regulation redefined it about residency is not where you store it, but where you process it. So it would not be authorized to store information in China, but send it over to a computer in the United States or to Europe to be able to either visualize or compute that information. The concept of residency will be, it needs to be stored, stored and processed uh, within um, the border uh, of China. And then from one thing to another, it, become, it became a geopolitical topic. And then every regulation got inspired by that modern definition of residency and propagated everywhere. And from one thing to another, if GDPR Article 32 was on security, it was only one page, but then it triggered a, a wave of regulation dedicated to technology with uh, the acceleration of the cloud, the acceleration of AI. And then we have different like human must not only back up a system, that's for example, DORA financial services regulation, but you must prove your recovery uh, because it's one thing to have a copy of your data. It's another thing to prove that you have a DR, DRP, a disaster recovery plan that you are testing very regularly and proving that in case of an incident, you have not only the right technology, you have the right procedure and the right organization to be able to recover uh, from the incident. So this is the big revolution that customers are facing is an acceleration of regulation. And if you if you try to develop regulation compliance one by one, you will struggle to keep up and maintain. That's why customers are looking from a central platform to operate uh, this compliance that will keep up with the acceleration of compliance and not only the new ones, but when uh, a, a regulation is getting updated, that uh, that would decrease the cost of maintenance to operate in compliance with the regulation in a system while, without decreasing the speed of innovation. Yes, and the reason why it's key, it's of course compliance comes at a cost if you don't you know, meet the requirements. But you think about you know, compliance and then governance, uh, and actually, it's such a best practice for the business, and that's because everything is data these days. The business data is the business, and that's fundamentally what's going on. And that's why, in a way, compliance has become such a, a complex topic, but also such a necessary one. Uh, I would like to also suggest that uh, in many ways, you, you're, you're correct, the 90s and early 2000s were focused on uh, financial compliance, uh, more than anything else, whereas with GDPR, we see is an extension, in a sense, of uh, human rights into data. Uh, we, uh, as individuals, are also considered data, and in a sense, I think that's what's going on here, meaning that now we can talk about another imp important topic. Uh, with this compliance problem, this security problem that we, we have at scale, what about reusing data for AI? What about being able to feed models? Can we even do that? So um, AI uh, is huge at the moment and raised now a few questions regarding security. So from you know the cool uh, new use case, we're wondering uh, how can we um, apply all of those new models and without putting the data in, in danger. So the first thing is um, 
before uh, tackling the, the AI, uh, today we manage uh, data in the cloud. And whenever you transfer, transfer your data to cloud vendors, you need to trust them. So they have employees, they have procedures, but whenever you entrust your data into those systems, you kind of delegate uh, the management of that of, of that data and the protection of it or the securization of it. Um, so what Odaseva has released last year uh, with our zero trust offering is a way to remove the need to trust a vendor so that you can leverage their IP, you can leverage their infrastructure, but their employee, when they connect to the database that is within their cloud infrastructure, won't be able to view it. So when we say security, there are multiple aspects to it. Like, is it about you know making sure it's not corrupted? Is it available? But that offering was really optimized for confidentiality, making sure that the data will only be accessed by whom will be authorized to view it. Uh, so the revolution that we bring with Odaseva Zero Trust is you no longer need to trust a vendor that's why you will trust them uh, to the maximum level because they cannot steal from you and they cannot see the information that you have. So that will apply to AI as well. So if you like, for example, to store an information that you like to be able to retrieve through AI, but you don't want this information to be visualized directly, you can proceed with encryption or tokenization. So with AI, you'll be able to apply pre-processing and post-processing. The pre-processing will be interesting, for example, to remove information before it goes to the AI. Let's say, for example, someone requested their data to not be um, managed or processed by a company, then you need to remove that information before feeding that to the model. Uh, if you have a credit card information, you might want to transform that information before injecting it into AI. Uh, we could use tokenization or encryption again. But if you do use tokenization or encryption, it means that when you retrieve that information, you will have to detokenize it or decrypt it, which require, uh, which requires uh, post-processing. Uh, so that's if I help in both cases. Uh, we do uh, compliance on the privacy side, uh, we do encryption layer, and Odaseva Zero Trust remove the need to trust a vendor by transforming the information before it leaves your premises and being um, entrusted into a vendor in the cloud uh, from Amazon to Microsoft or to Salesforce. Thank you, Sylvain. I think we've covered a lot of ground. I really like this um, approach of essentially you go to the root cause here. You're, you're, you're uh, sort of safeguarding the data, making sure that it can never be used in a way that it shouldn't. Uh, and it still gives you the ability and the flexibility uh, to build models, feed, feed models, uh, and, and create uh, added value for your business through AI. Uh, I'd like to thank you so much for your time. I know we've uh, we've covered security, backup, archiving, AI. Uh, there's plenty more to uh, to talk about. Uh, we'll uh, continue uh, next time. But uh, in the meantime, I'd like to thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you uh, on the next Analyst Angle brought to you by the Cube Research.